Here's the top 10 countries by fixed broadband internet speed. Here's the top 20. And here's the top 30. Australia is nowhere to be seen. Where's Australia? We're all the way down at number 57, wedged between the South American countries of Uruguay and Paraguay. Yes, the likes of China, Thailand and even New Zealand have faster internet speed than we do. Where did we go wrong? We turned the National Broadband Network, that is the NBN, into a political football. Andy Penn, boss of Telstra, Australia's largest telecommunications company, says Australian internet is among the most expensive in the world. He recently spoke at the National Press Club. Unfortunately, because of where wholesale broadband prices have gone, basically all operators are losing money reselling the NBN. And therefore some, and they've said it publicly, are looking at 5G to bypass the NBN. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Unless the whole ecosystem is viable, then no one part of it can be viable either. And so candidly, unless the pricing structure is changed and operators can actually make a return on capital, which shareholders are prepared to invest in, then NBN is worthless anyway. Strong words from a person who's at the top of the industry. To be fair, Telstra isn't entirely innocent. Andrew Sheridan, Vice President of Regulatory and Public Affairs at Optus, accused Telstra of hypocrisy. He said, When Telstra was the monopoly wholesale provider, it spent the better part of a decade fighting the regulator through the courts to defend its high access prices. It's a bit rich for Telstra to be lecturing NBN on wholesale price levels. Australia's NBN debacle started back in 2007 in the lead up to the 2007 federal election. The then Labor Party, headed by Kevin 07, proposed that it would create a super fast national broadband network that would see optical fibre to the node technology rolled out to 98% of Australian homes. It was estimated that it would cost about $15 billion. The Labor Party went on to win the election and Mr Rudd was happy. In 2008, Telstra was excluded from the project as their proposal was non-compliant. So instead, Telstra decided to demand 15 to 20 billion dollars in compensation. In 2009, the Rudd government said they would bypass the existing copper network and construct the NBN using fibre to the premises technology. It would reach approximately 93% of Australian households by June 2021 at an estimated cost of 43 billion dollars. This was later revised downwards by the NBN Co to about $37 billion. In 2010, Tony Abbott, the then leader of the opposition, and Malcolm Turnbull, Shadow Minister for Communications, said they would demolish the NBN as it was too costly, it would take too long, and that there was not a significant demand for such a service in Australia. They revised Rudd's estimate and said that the actual cost of the NBN would be upwards of $72 billion. Anyway, fast forward almost a decade and the political football match is still going on. We've now ended up with a bastardised mess of a broadband network which includes wired communication, copper and optical fibre, radio communication, satellite and fixed wireless networks, fibre to the premises, fibre to the building, hybrid fibre coaxial, fibre to the curb and fibre to the node. You can now even get fibre to the smoke. It's a brand new smoke signalling technology that's not quite as fast as the NBN, but it certainly is cheaper and sometimes a lot more reliable. NBN Co officially call all of these technologies their multi-technology mix. That's just a polite way of describing the actual state of affairs, a mother trucking mess. The ACCC have pointed out the unfairness of the pricing structure of the NBN. Chair Rod Sims said earlier this year, We are now observing prices of low speed NBN plans offered to new customers that are at least $10 per month higher than what consumers paid for equivalent ADSL plans. There is a fundamental question of fairness here for those on low incomes. Entry level services should be anchored to existing ADSL pricing. This is only fair to consumers because they have no choice but to move to the NBN as their existing services are being withdrawn. University of Sydney's Dr. Turan Alizadeh spoke of the NBN debacle. She said, The NBN has already held Australia back in comparison to our global competition. As a nation, we have every right to feel betrayed because this is a national infrastructure project that only became possible because of taxpayer funding and we deserve better. Mixed technology means mixed quality of service. Some will be better off than others without any clear indication. 
And now thanks to this political football that is the NBN, we now have internet in Australia that's on par with the South American countries of Uruguay and Paraguay. Thanks Australian Government! <laughs>